Hello right, everyone and welcome to the Highland Collector YouTube channel and today I'm making a long overdue return to Funko Pop videos. I haven't made one in over 6 months which is crazy. And with San Diego Comic Con right around the corner and Fungo having a decent line of exclusives this year for it, I'm going to be ranking all 30 odd figures in a tier list, so I feel like that should be interesting. Now if you don't know how tier lists work, I will be listing each figure in different ranks, with S being the best of the best, A being great figures, B being solid figures, C being your average figure, nothing too special, and finally D tier, the lowest, being the worst figures. Now you may have noticed I haven't included an F tier, and that's because I don't think it's warranted here simply because I don't think any figure here is shit. There are definitely some bad ones, but nothing downright horrid or insulting, like all those Chrome Pops Funko had an obsession with a few years ago. So glad we're mostly over that. <coughs> now please note that this video will be my opinions, and of course there will be some bias, especially towards Star Wars as I am a Star Wars channel. Also note, I'm only going to be ranking the shared Funko Pop exclusives, so none of the Freddy Funkos or any other products like the sodas, the t-shirts, the lounge fly bags or the skateboards. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now first up we have a new Bambi Pop in which he has a little butterfly on his tail, and yes this pop is really cute, but compared to other figures yet to come, it's kind of basic, and it's only deserving of a C tier in my opinion. It's fairly underwhelming, especially considering it's the only classic Disney slash Pixar pop we've gotten for SDCC this year which is incredibly disappointing as we usually get more than one, considering how many Disney and Pixar films there are, and the limitless possibilities of characters they could have made. But there is new Bambi Wave rumour to be coming out soon, so I guess this is why we got this. But then again, that's kind of how convention exclusives go. For one convention, a particular theme will have a really strong selection of figures, and others will get their turn another time around, maybe for NYCC or ECCC. As for SDCC 2022, the strongest line has to be Marvel, as there's not a bad figure, they're all pretty solid. Starting with the Scarlet Scarab from a recent Moon Knight show, and unlike the Moon Knight show, this figure is actually pretty solid. Now we have known about this one for a while now, but it's still pretty awesome. I do like the pose they chose for her with her wings out, and overall her outfit looks really cool and accurate to the show, with some great detailing and some really cool metallic paint as well. It isn't the best figure of the con, but it's still really cool, and is a must for any Moon Knight fan, and so for that it's worthy of a B tier. Next up we got another America Chavez from the new film Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, or more commonly known Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Mildness and Shitty Writing. But jokes aside, I think this is a really cool figure and it's definitely worthy of A tier, as it takes the standard common America Chavez pop and just elevates it, making it so much more unique and interesting. Now the pose for this figure is pretty cool as she's kind of in this fighting stance, but the main highlight of this figure has to be the big blue star portal which is connected to her back. The translucent blue just looks so great. It really makes this figure the superior version of America Chavez in pop form. Next up we have Silk for the Amazing Spider-Man comics, and this figure is actually really cool, and it's mainly because of the sculpt. She's in a really cool stance which looks like she's swinging, and it's made even more convincing with her hair waving backwards. Her suit is also really cool too, as I believe it's actually made from her webs, which has resulted in some really nice detailing from Funko, but I'm not too familiar with this character, and despite the fact it looks sick, it's not one I'll be getting anytime soon, but still it's deserving of A tier. Now, the 10 inch Miss Minute, I actually like this one a lot more than I was expecting to, considering it's just a blown up version of the regular pop. I like this one because she's a character who makes sense to do in 10 inch scale, as I believe she's roughly that size in the Loki show. Also, what makes this figure better is it also glows in the dark, to further make it seem like she is the hologram from the show. And finally, this figure doesn't even look like a Funko Pop, so it could just pass as a replica of Miss Minute, which is a good thing for all the Funko haters, I guess. We actually got a second figure from the Loki show for SDCC, that being He Who Remains, or Kang the Conqueror, another figure we've known about for a while as Funko revealed his concept ages ago. But he's still a decent pop, I really love the purple and green colour scheme which makes him really stand out, and in addition to this I like they gave him the apple as well. Spider-Man 2029 is not a version of the character I'm too familiar with. I know full well there's a blue and red version, which has been a pop several times in the past, but this one is mainly white, red and black. I think he's from a PS4 game, I wouldn't know, I sadly own an Xbox. But with that being said, I'm not a massive fan, I mean it's cool enough, the pose is cool. It's a pretty good looking futuristic Spidey, I'm sure Spider-Man fans will be satisfied with it, but it's just not for me. Here we have two figures that are part of the retro toy line, and are also a strange crossover between the Power Rangers and the TMNT, as we have Leonardo as the Blue Power Ranger and Donatello as the Black Ranger, and these two are actually really cool, not a crossover I particularly care about, I believe it's based on a comic or something, but both figures are awesome in their own right, and are entirely new moulds I believe, they didn't just do a typical Funko head swap, and for that they are worthy of an A tier. 
Another addition to the retro toy lines is this new He-Man from Masters of the Universe. And if I'm being completely honest, this figure is the definition of average. Collectors of Masters of the Universe will probably love this one, but I personally don't really see the appeal as it just looks like every other He-Man. But then again, I'm probably just too young. The one thing that does make this figure look somewhat cool has to be the armour. I really love the metallic blue they used, and his sword also looks cool as well, although really weird at the same time, as they've used this translucent green. Now, love it or hate it, Squid Game is here to stay, with the Season 2 officially in production. And another result of the show's popularity was the pop line, which was revealed surprisingly quick after the show's success. And this red light green light doll is a great addition to the set. I think it came out really great and captures the look from the show perfectly. I also like how they made it 6 inches tall so it would tower over the other figures. Now in the past year this thing has become insanely iconic, and it is nice to see it finally get a Funko Pop because it was absent from that first Squid Game line. Ted Lasso is a show I've never seen, but I do want to as I've only heard good things. But to me this figure looks kind of standard and boring, and that's to be expected as there are more coming out at a later date. So Funko is just going to get everyone to buy this mediocre version just to release a better one later on. But still, if you like Ted Lasso, I'm sure you're more than happy with this, and would probably rate it higher than a C. I'll be honest, I'm not a massive fan of the South Park pop. I love the show, but I don't love the figures and I think it's because of their eyes. I just don't think the black button eyes work on South Park characters, due to the fact that the big white eyes are such an iconic part of the character design in the show. Two figures I do like from the line are PC Principal and Awesomeo, most likely because they don't have those typical Funko eyes, and Stan does fall victim to this, although I love the reference to the Tron Facebook episode, and the fact it glows in the dark is great, but South Park pops just don't gel with me, so it's going to have to be the first D tier. So for those of you who don't know, this toucan is actually the mascot for San Diego Comic Con. For the past couple of years we've seen him as convention exclusives, the first one being back in 2019 I believe. But now we have two more, a pirate and also a guitarist. But I get he is the mascot and everything, but I'm just so sick of seeing this toucan. Just gone so many in the past couple years that these two don't really feel that special. Although admittedly they are some of the better ones we have seen, I really love the pirate one especially. These toucans are cool, don't get me wrong, but they're nothing too special. They're lucky they got a B tier, yet they are better than the NYCC pigeon. Now I'm going to make a lot of enemies with what I'm going to say next, but Friends is a pretty shit sitcom at least compared to other shows like the Chad Arrested Development. But yeah, I've never been a fan of Friends, I just don't find it that funny, and I think some of the characters are just frankly annoying. But I'll give it this, it is better than other shows such as this piece of shit. But the Friends pop revealed for SDCC is Hugsy the Penguin, think is a plush toy from the show. It's actually a pretty obscure reference, as a lot of Friends fans didn't know what this was. You kinda needed to be in the loop to actually appreciate this figure. But then again, I don't really like Friends like I said, and I just think it's a cute looking penguin pop. So it's going in B tier. But enough about bad shows, Peacemaker, it's generally a really good show, and blows every Disney Plus Marvel show out of the water. I mean, it's really that good. Ironically, the pop isn't. It's just kind of weak, because it is just Peacemaker doing the peace sign, which is fitting for the character, but it is just boring, especially because we've gotten a whole wave of Peacemaker pops, which are a million times better than this. The best one obviously being him and Eagly. Now next up we have Councilman Jeremy Jam from Parks and Recreation. A character you just love to hate, but I won't be hating on this pop however because I think they've done an excellent job, as it really does look like the actor who plays him, and he's a really great pick for a convention exclusive because he's not a main character from Parks and Rec, but I'm glad we are getting him. This glow in the dark demogorgon has to be the laziest pop of this year's San Diego Comic Con, apart from maybe the Charmander, so it's no surprise it's going in D tier. I mean there's just so many Stranger Things pops Funko could have done, especially from the newest season, but instead they chose to reuse this sculpt from 5 years ago. And the glow isn't even that good, it's just his teeth. So the only reason people are going to be getting this because it comes with the bag, and the bag is way better than this figure. This supersonic first appearance is an amazing pop, there's just so much to love about it. The sculpt, the pose, the colours and the fact it glows in the dark is basically a dream come true for any Sonic fan, and it's definitely one of the highlights of this convention. A tier pop in my opinion is this Mnu from Demon Slayer. Now bear with me, I know nothing about anime. I've only seen Cowboy Bebop and the odd episode of Pokemon, as well as Star Wars Visions of course. And although I am a noob when it comes to anime, I do know a good pop when I see one and this is a good pop. It's just the colours I think are really cool. The main figure itself is just black and white, but then you have these bursts of blue and pink, which really just make the figure stand out. And my favourite feature has to be the eyes, as they just look so weird. On to DC now, and we have our third A tier in a row, that being Starfire. The version of Starfire from the Justice League, who is more grown up than what she was in Teen Titans. This figure is just amazing in my opinion. I really love how her hair turns into the fiery base plate she's standing on. 
but my favourite aspect has to be the colours, with the oranges, pinks, purples and greens. It just looks amazing and will stand out on any shelf. But now we have our first S tier and my personal favourite pop from the entire convention. That being the Batman Returns Penguin on Rubber Ducky Pop Ride. This thing is phenomenal and is pretty much perfect. Batman Returns is one of my favourite Batman films and the Penguin is one of my favourite Batman villains. Especially from Batman Returns when he's played wonderfully by Danny DeVito is a bit of a weird monstrous take on the character. But nevertheless this pop ride is amazing and it's definitely one of the best pop rides to ever exist. Just everything is great from the penguin figure to the rubber ducky itself. It has great detailing and we also get a couple of mini electronic penguins in the back too. And it's definitely one I'll be picking up 100%. Back to anime now and we have Super Chocho Butterfly Mode from Boruto, another character I know pretty much nothing about, although it does have a common figure and this one is definitely better, largely due to those big translucent butterfly wings on the figure, which makes it look really cool and at least deserving of a B tier. Gran Torino from My Hero Academia is yet another character I don't really care about. I think it's just a really basic looking pop. It doesn't have much detail to it, but then again that could be the fault of the character's design from the show. I do like the sculpt, I think the cape is cool, and I also like how he's kind of like boosting up from the ground. But then again, I just think this pop is super basic looking, and it doesn't really do anything for me. But then again, I'm not a My Hero Academia fan, so of course I'm not going to vibe with it. So please don't hate me for that. We've had dozens of Gokus as Funko Pops, but this Goku with the steering wheel has to be one of the worst. I mean, it's just so boring. It's just a Goku holding a steering wheel. If you're a Dragon Ball Z fan, you're going to appreciate this figure a lot more because you actually get the reference. But for me, as someone who's never seen the show, this figure just looks really dull, especially when there's better versions of Goku out there like this one, which actually looks sick. But yeah, D tier. Now here we go, finally onto the good stuff, Star Wars. Starting with the Phase 2 Purge Trooper from the Obi-Wan Kenobi show. This thing is an immediate S tier. Like the Black Series figure we saw revealed a couple weeks ago, this thing looks great. It's an entirely new mould and I love the red and the black and everything about this figure just looks great. Always nice to get more troopers as Funko Pops. Just waiting on more clones now Funko. We need a 330 second trooper as soon as possible. Now we're actually taking a step back with this one. Next up we have Cassian Andor from the upcoming Disney Plus show Andor. Now this figure is just kind of basic and I think Funko are doing with this figure what they're doing with Ted Lasso. They're releasing this kind of boring doll figure first as an exclusive so people will buy that and later on we'll get all the cooler figures as common so people will also buy those as well. Again this figure isn't awful, I think it's deserving of a B tier at least as I do really like the Cassian Andor character and I can't wait for the show to come out. But back up to S tier, we have a black chrysanthemum from the Book of Boba Fett. Let's bro make notes because this is how you make a good chrysanthemum figure. As it's not just a reuse of Chewbacca, it actually looks like the character. As it's got his bulkiness and also his correct fur. And his gladiator armour looks amazing too. Not to mention it's also flocked. Which means we'll most likely see a normal version released as a common at some point. That doesn't take away from my enjoyment of this figure. I do have one criticism, and that's he's missing his scar above his eye. Although it just could be the flockness of the figure hiding it. If not, then that's a pretty big mistake, and I have to mark this character down to a low A or high B. Now, I'm not even going to try and pronounce the name of this character or the show that he's in, but all you need to know is he's a dude with a sword and pink spiky hair. Nothing too special, so I'm just going to put him in C tier. The worst figure of this convention has to be the metallic Charmander. Why is Charmander metallic? I don't know. Honestly, I'm so sick of Pokemon Pops at this point. When they first came out, they actually felt fresh and new, everyone excited about them, but now they're just milking the same old Pokemon over and over and over again. If you're going to repaint a figure, at least make it make sense, or have some sort of creativity behind it. Should have made this figure a shiny, it would have been a million times better and it would have actually made sense. But yeah, this Metallic Charmander isn't it. Definitely the worst figure of the convention. G.I. Joe is another franchise I don't care too much about, but this Serpentor is actually really cool. Sculpt is great and I really love the metallic gold and green colour scheme he has going on. It makes the figure really stand out. Although I can't help but overlook the fact he looks like one of those Lego figures who are in the costumes. Can't get that out of my head. And I will forever think of that when I see this figure. And finally, the last pop on this list is Unicron from Transformers, another figure in the retro toy line. And this jumbo size pop is actually really cool. Not into retro Transformers, I've seen some of the newer stuff, and I actually like the design of this figure a lot. It has a really interesting mould and pretty cool colours as well. I'm really digging the yellow and purple.
So that's my opinion on every STCC Funko Pop for 2022. Let me know down below in the comments which figures you liked and which figures you didn't like and what ones you're going after. And again, this is just my opinion, so don't get mad at me if we don't like the same figures. But before I go, I'm just going to leave you with a quick small tier list of all the Funko Pop sodas, as I didn't want to rate them in with all the Funko Pops, as you can't really compare the two. But if you did like this video and you want to see more Funko content, make sure to like and subscribe. Also, I am sorry for those of you expecting the Black Series video. Have my word that my next video will definitely be Black Series related. So I'll see you then.